Jamie Woodruff, ethical hacker, thank you for joining us here at Fun Forum International. You've been talking a lot about what this industry faces. It's a significant challenge for the future, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, a lot of um, companies aren't taking the security seriously. So we're finding that after they've, they've been breached, they've not got the contingency plans in place and they haven't got the insurance is relevant. So it's costing the companies uh, effectively to liquidate and just go under. Um, so a lot of the companies need to take uh, into consideration that the security threat actually exists, um, but it's just actually getting that point across. So I mean, I could sit down with um, PowerPoint presentations and tell them about statistics, but to me, a lot of companies see that every day. The managing directors see that every day. It doesn't mean anything. It's just numbers on a piece of paper. So part of this event is to kind of highlight it by hacking a website live in like 45 minutes to show how easy it was to gain access to like a customer relations management system for a simple blog installation. Um, so yeah, so it's just highlight the threat. Are they surprised by how easy that is generally? Uh, yeah, a lot of people are. I mean, I don't want to pat on the back and just say that like um, it's going to be all right because it's not. It's, it's more of a case of it's not if you're going to get hacked, it's when. So it's every company is going to get hacked in the next two to five years. And a lot of it's just for fun. Kids do it. You've got 12 year olds now and 15 year olds just downloading software and causing companies hundreds of thousands of pounds. And what can these companies do about that? What should they be doing about that? They should be putting uh, just like pl uh, plans in place and like steps in place just in case, but a lot of companies uh, are not doing this. I mean, there's nothing, you cannot completely secure everything. There's, there's always a way in. Um, through this morning, I did a demonstration with the Pizza Box where I dressed up as a well known company and, and showed how easy it was to gain access into a company um, by pretending to be a pizza guy. So it's more of a case you have to find like um, a bridge between uh, what you can do for security and what you can't do for security. And you need to have money in, in, in place for security. For those contingency plans, if you like. Yeah, effectively, yeah. And put them through, I mean, regularly do testing. Not just test once a year, but once every two years. Every single month, have like a threat assessment. Try and hack your systems and see how far you can get. So you could even turn it into a, an event for your employees. You could do some kind of reward system, say, okay, we'll see how far you can get, guys, with no access. Get them some pizza and some beer and see how far they can get. And then you put it in place and then it'll save you in the long run. What do you think these companies have been thinking about this up until now? Do you think they're a bit slow on the uptake with this and it's now yeah, dawning a lot on them, of, if you like? Unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of the directors are people that have been in the industry for years and it's people that have grown from the very start of the company to, to at least the very top. And we're seeing they're not really technologically advanced. So a lot of them, for instance, um, there's a, what analogy that I like to use, there was a, a pen test for a, an army pen test. It's a part of like, the threat assessment, they have to get an external company to come in and verify that everything's uh, okay. So what they did was they asked the company to come in and check the network. So this uh, army guy, the general, turns around and says, here's permission to check my network. So after three or four days, there was no vulnerabilities found. On the fifth day, they was able to gain access to the entire network. So this general guy is like, how, how did you do that? And it was because this, he did a press release two weeks ago before the event, and they took the press release, put it on a disc, infected it with a virus, and sent it to him through the post. So he, him being the weak link wanted to see himself in his press release, and because he was high up on the network, they gained access to everything else. So it's about like not just cyber security, but about your physical security. I mean, police protect your physical security. Hackers protect your online security, and people need to understand that, that they're not, they're not all bad people. You can be an ethical hacker like yourself. Yeah, you can have just as much fun being an ethical hacker that you can do being a black hat hacker. And do you think that companies need to have people like you in-house as well, mm -hmm. more people like you? Yeah, they do, yeah. Um, they need to have more people in-house, but they need to understand that um, there's a saying that I use all the time, it's my saying, it's called, there's no patch for ignorance. And the patch is like, when a developer writes their own code, they write it in their style. Well, that might not always be the best efficient style. It's the way that they was taught. So we're finding a lot of vulnerabilities now are through the way that developers write their code. Um, so yeah, it's just basically around that. So it's human error and human yeah. fallibility, if you it's like, always, as well. It's always human, human error. I mean, if it's not down to the source code, it's down to the fact that an employee's uh, possibly having an affair with one of his colleagues. That's really, I, I find that quite a lot um, for extortion. So when I come in and I have to find the, the assessment, do, a, do an assessment of the network or the company, it's not just the, the network, it's more of a case of the employees, what they're doing, what they've got access to, why are they in out of hours, all this stuff I have to take on board because a bad person would take it on board, an unethical person would use that against the company. It's crossing all those T's and dotting all those I's. Yeah, so it's more of a case, it's very, it's very dangerous, the stuff that I do. A lot of people get really scared and not understand 
what I'm doing. And I mean, it's fear, isn't it? If someone knows a lot of knowledge about networks and can understand this stuff and somebody can't understand how they're doing it, it's fear more than anything. But a lot of companies won't address that because they think, oh, well, what if they find something? What if they use that against me? So a lot of companies try and keep it in-house and that's the worst thing that you can do. Jamie, do you think the companies that are here are really listening to you today and do you think you've had a lot so. of interest in what you're saying in terms of them really properly engaging with it? <sighs> yes and no. I mean, it goes back to the fact that because somebody doesn't understand something, they're not willing to give an interesting point into it. But when I'd show somebody that, for instance, there was uh, a member of the audience that I um, text him from his wife's phone, just in front of him on my mobile, and he's like, how did you do that? And then all of a sudden, he wants to know about everything else. So it's finding that correct input. So I'm trying to do a demonstration um, later where I'll be showing everybody what they've been doing throughout the day. So I've been sat just watching everybody through my laptop. So every request that they've sent out, every username and the password that they've had, I've been able to intercept that data. And that's through just a normal piece of software that anyone could download or get. People need to see it in real terms and relate to it to themselves it. To, yeah. to then extrapolate yeah, that across Yeah, exactly. Everything. And that's, that's what I'm trying to do. So instead of patting you on the back and saying everything's going to be fine, I'm going to shock you and show you that this is a, a dangerous world in, in regards to cybersecurity. Jamie, watch this space. Thank you very much indeed Thank for you. joining us.